Aeneid, Book 1, Lines 60-64, to 64, Sed pater omnipotens be luncis abdiditatris. But the omnipotent father, this means Jupiter, abdidit, uh, hid them away in dark caves. A little ablative there. And just to explain, uh, Jupiter, that's who we're talking about. Hawk Meadow ends. Fearing this, this is a present active participle modifying Jupiter. And then this is the direct object of that participle. Fearing this. And, all right, remember that connects behind itself. And uh, he, here's your verb, he placed direct object number one, direct object number two, there, a mass and high mountains on top. And this is an example of Andiades. I think I screwed that up. I think it's an I there. How about that? Mm -hmm. Yes, one through two. So, a uh, mass and mountains, massive mountains. Regem quid did it. And he gave it a king. All right. Verb. Direct object. Remember, the subject of this is Jupiter. He uh, puts places a king in charge of this mountain full of winds. And that king, of course, is Aeolus. A king who, under a certain contract... All right, starts with that, the contract. Et, et, both would know to oppress it and to, let's see, uh, and to dare, to give loose reins. All right, so here we have the imperfect subjunctive. And why is that? Well, we've got this whole clause beginning with the relative pronoun there. And this is a relative clause of purpose. Relative clause of purpose. This relative pronoun, it could be substituted with ut so that he would know. It does express purpose. That's the purpose of Aeolus being put in charge as king, is uh, to know how to push them down or to give slack reins. And then this usus, okay, that's a PPP, perfect passive participle, and that describes the king, the qui, the king, which is Aeolus. And so it's very emphatic that it's only when ordered, only having been ordered to give loose reins. Because, of course, what's going to happen is Aeolus, having been bribed, will break this foiter acerto. He'll break the contract. And Iusus, he won't be ordered, and he will dare laxas abenas, give slack reins. Ad quem tum juno suplex his vocibus usast. To whom, and now we're talking to Aeolus, then Juno, as a suppliant, used these words. This is one of those utor uti usus This is one of those deponent verbs that takes an ablative. So that's an, oops, ablative, d-o. Here's your subject, here's your verb. And this suplex, yeah, I can say that's in a positive, Juno as suppliant, but it can also be described as an adverbial nominative, which really describes how we translate it more than what it is in Latin. In Latin, it's nominative singular feminine modifying Juno. But Juno is really the subject of this verb, and the suplex describes 
describes how she performs this action, this using of words. And she performs it humbly as a suppliant. And anything that modifies a verb that way is often thought of as an adverb. And I do want to go back to see this word used exactly in the same sense. Remember this sentence, and who shall adore the divine power of Juno after this, or as a suppliant place an offering on her altars. Suplex again, working a little bit like an adverb, a little bit like an appositive adjective there. It's a nominative singular, uh, who knows, masculine or feminine, because it's an unknown quantity, the quisquam, and it's the subject of imponat.